the wolves of the sea. No animal is more intelligent or more majestic. 97 killer whales live in our waters, but could our activities be driving them away? In part two of an exclusive special report, King 5 visits another Northwest treasure, a family dedicated to preserving Puget Sound's killer whales. You've heard of Free Willie. This is Willie. Free. Free Orca, starting Tuesday on King 5 News at 11. Tonight on King 5 News, we continue our special series on Free Orca with a look at the whales which live in our own waters. Puget Sound is one of the only urban areas with resident whales. King 5's Linda Brill introduces us to the Northwest Pods tonight and a family devoted to their preservation. Killer whales, the wolves of the sea. They can be both fearsome and playful, perhaps the most intelligent animal in the ocean. Go, go. They wow us in Hollywood movies, and they entertain us at SeaWorld. But did you know that the original performing whales were captured right here in Northwest waters? They're named J, K, and L pods. 96 killer whales now live in Puget Sound, moving in tight family groups with mom leading the packs. Killer whales captured the imagination of wildlife artist and photographer Kelly Balcom. Uh, Dave, have that one. Should we go see about a mom and a baby? The spark comes from his dad, whale researcher Ken Balcom. Together, the father-son team runs the Center for Whale Research on San Juan Island. Uh, was spread out like this, the way they're all searching them. I'm, I'm sure they're just waiting for one of them to find a little cluster of fish, and then they'll go and work them. Can you tell them apart? The Belcoms can identify a whale from a hundred yards away. Yeah, that's J3. It's the dorsal fin on the back of the whale, and there's what we call a saddle, the gray pigment area, which is just under the fin and he has this uh, nice narrow saddle as compared to this relatively broad saddle on J8, the grandmother. Between those two characters, it's a cinch who they are. And we just take the photograph so that we can convince the scientists and the world that uh, this is actually true. The Balcoms also listen to the calls of the killer whales. There they are. These are very similar calls, and yet there's some differences in between each. We hear pops, whistles, and squeals, but Ken and Kelly hear language. We know for sure that the pods of JKNL have their own calls, uh, distinct to their pods. You go to other countries and they have other killer whales, they speak other languages, but they speak language. But will we ever speak their language? As in the NBC series Sequest, where a dolphin speaks his mind. Ask him. How did we meet? Darren Kirk Allen I'd love to have that yellow phone if that really existed, but I don't think we're quite there yet, I don't think. They started out watching them, and two decades later, they're listening to them, and the next thing they'll want to do is talk to them. Why would a Northwest family spend so much of their lives researching whales? Preservation. Do we run the risk in Washington of losing our pods? Oh, very definitely. By overfishing, by pollutant contamination, by uh, basic runoffs of sewage, yes. Washington State and the people of Washington should really feel fortunate and somewhat responsible, I would think. I, I do, personally. Um, for their well-being and for their future. We're lucky Puget Sound remains one of the few urban regions in the world with resident orca. And the orca are lucky that a Northwest family is looking over them. Well, I would like to see them go by in front of my house for the rest of my life. Then I hope my neighbors think likewise. In the San Juan Islands, Linda Brill, King 5 News.